what's going on guys? My name is Violent. Welcome to update 1.08 for Call of Duty World War II. Zombies. Now you may have downloaded this file, but you might not have known exactly all that changed. Well, we're going to be covering that today, so be sure to drop a like on the video if you do go on to enjoy, or just learn something useful, and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section if you're new, and if anything here, anything at all sparks an idea, be sure to hit me up over on Twitter, at GrizzViolent. It's the best place to keep talking zombies. So you're probably wondering what all changed over in the zombies section. Is there much that actually occurred? Well, when you pull up your supply drop menu, you'll notice that across all your supply drops, the overlay that says available supply drops that used to be above has now been lowered, so it's actually cutting into what we're seeing. And that is pretty much the only change that Update 108 brought. Here's what the old version looked like. You can see the original placement was above all the supply drops that we once were looking at. Now it's cutting into the actual images of our supply drops. So that is the huge change that happened. I don't like it. I don't think it actually looks better. I think it's actually a flaw. But what we're here today to take a look at is the Winter Collection and expired loot that went down for Winter Siege. You'll notice that what it looks like today is a very locked version. This is not available with armory credits if you haven't unlocked them already. If you take a look here, it doesn't give us the option at, at all. And it does say up in the upper right corner, outside of the menu, that it says Winter Siege has expired. And what that means is you can no longer buy these items with armory credits. However, you can get them out of rare supply drops. So any items that you're missing, you could still obtain through rare supply drops. And I'm going to show you that right now as we throw a rare supply drop down. We're going to be getting a winner drop. And this is what's important to note. But I do get a duplicate and my boy Ecoli Espresso as well on his epic zombie crate that he got through Twitch Prime. If you're a part of that membership, was a duplicate as well. So don't get your hopes up too high. The duplicates are very real still. And I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, what I'm seeing right now in World War II Zombies just is not as fun to me as Infinite Warfare Zombies was. And you might think that's crazy because storyline's a big factor when it comes to these games, I get it. But at the same time, being able to freaking play the game is what I enjoy the most. And everybody who's reached Prestige 10 or Master Prestige on isn't able to actually earn zombie supply drops. So a big topic of the conversation right now is should you be doing the unlimited zombie supply drop glitch and the answer there's no easy answer man it's like do you support the current system that supply drops are happening or are you gonna exploit it and maybe if enough people do it we can see some real positive change there's no easy answer here but what is easy is knowing your gut feeling and your gut feeling tells you that there isn't much replayability here and it just pisses you off especially since daily and weekly bounties are still being pushed to the side. We're now in 2018, but the weapon that I want to talk about for the most part is called the Goher 43. At least that's how I'm going to pronounce it. And it's a weapon that I unlocked in my Winter Siege collection because it had zombie perks. So this is the only thing that's part of this event that is zombies time-based exclusive that's a weapon quest. And the weapon quest is simply earned through armory credits, and that was the way you had to do it. Now, the only way to do this is to open supply drops and I'm talking rare supply drops and opening winter gear is the only way you're going to be able to obtain it now but on the very last day of winter siege I had to work towards getting 4,000 armory credits so yeah I was doing the unlimited zombie supply drop glitch and getting armory credits that way because in zombies you can't earn more zombie supply drops past rank 45 prestige 10 and you have to be prestige 1 on any rank in order to do the actual zombie supply drop glitch shout out to my boy Jay Stone for actually showing me this he showed me this weeks ago and this was how I was able to accrue so many armory credits to max out a bunch of my collections but I did earn a bunch of them in multiplayer as well I just got really sick of doing that because I don't want to play 30 plus games just to get winner bribes of guaranteed material and that's a lot of dedication in multiplayer that I could be playing in Zombies. But they don't allow you to earn armory credits properly in Zombies. So that's really, really what tickles me. The weapon perk High Velocity does stack with Full Metal Jackets, increasing bullet penetration for 
killing zombies or higher tiered zombies. So that is something that I wanted to note as well. Headhunter is the other perk that comes with this weapon, this Winter Siege weapon. Headshots, kills, grant a bonus to the special ability meter. This does work like a charm. I've showed you guys in past videos what the Headhunter perk is capable of, and it's amazing. Now, is this weapon something to ride home about, to go tell grandma about? I'm going to let you know that in this video today. Since the launch of Call of Duty World War II, I have wanted time-based loot to be a thing and to be put in as time-based quests. And this is one that actually came to fruition, the Chiller, the Goer 43. It is an epic variant, and you can only get it out of the magic box. This took me quite a few spins to get, so don't think you're going to be getting this weapon very fast. It has somewhat of a cool pointing animation to it when you inspect the weapon. I, I like it, but it's not one that I'm going to tell Grandma about, simply because of the way it shoots. It does very single shots, and when you upgrade it, it does remind me of the GOAT which is the M1 upgraded greatest of all time. And I do stand by that. I do think the M1 outperforms the Goher 43 times 10. Now the Sten is definitely something I can ride home to Grandma about because the Frosty is definitely still one of my favorite looking weapons. Performance wise, it just feels good. The Goher 43, not so much. So one of the important things to bring up is the end game grind, mostly because that this time-based reward is now over. You, you simply can't just earn this. You have to get lucky in rare supply drops in order to obtain the exact item you need in the collection. There's no possible way of unlocking it specifically like you could during the Winter Siege event anymore. Do I like this and support this idea? I think it's cool, but the weapon should have been 10 times better and definitely should not have been the Gohurt 43 at all. The Sten should have had the zombie perks because that's something people more likely would use, especially in World War II zombies. Right now, people aren't going to be using this type of rifle by any means if you were to ask my professional opinion. Now, as more information comes out for DLC 1, I'm sure my perspective might change slightly, but the hint we got right now is fogs rolling in and we know that's a dead meme from Transit, and even Origins was a continuation of that meme being dead. So why is it something that we're bringing to the forefront now when it's not funny and people are seeing this as something that's just steering them away? I think Sledgehammer's making some terrible mistakes moving into this. It reminds me a lot of DLC 3 with Infinite Warfare Zombies. If you guys remember Attack of the Radioactive Thing and how the marketing budget sort of went for that. If you guys remember before the launch of DLC 3 and Infinite Warfare Zombies, we didn't even have a trailer for the actual map. I can't even recall off the top of my head if one even actually came out. I never downloaded it or covered it if it did. And people just didn't know what the map was about or gonna be going on. So if this is the only teaser that we got for DLC 1 Zombies, I'm deathly afraid for where this is going to go and if people are going to invest their money into this because Treyarch's coming up, guys. Treyarch's coming up in November and people don't need to be wasting their money. And I'm not going to sit here and preach for my audience to waste their money on a title that's not performing. And unfortunately, with Call of Duty being a AAA title, I don't know why Sledgehammer is even here if they're not performing correctly. We're seeing things in Zombies that are missing, that aren't there, and it's just really starting to get to me to a point where I don't even care to cover the DLC and Season Pass moving forward. I'd rather cover information that's important for us to understand going in to 2018 of Treyarch's game because there's a lot of storyline and really in-depth stuff with Rick Toffin and the original four crew that is vital to moving from DLC 3 into DLC 4, and I just got a lot to share when it comes to that because I know that storyline so well. With this storyline, it's coming up a bit short and a bit weak and I feel like Sledgehammer doesn't quite have their ducks in a row, but hey, I'm not going to count all my chickens yet. I'm definitely going to give them a chance with DLC 1, but I am buying it separately. I'm not buying the season pass because I don't believe our best interests are in mind, fellas. I don't believe that 100% and I'm not gonna lie about it. There's no point in lying about it. This is pretty much my raw reaction to all of this with a little bit of thought process going into it, but I do feel that it's important that I portray this the correct way, and with update 1.08, it seems that all that came to zombies was them messing up the supply drop menu, so have a look at that, enjoy that for now, and hopefully in update 1.09, we'll actually see some real change. 
I'll see you in the next video. Violin out.